Ooh, did you hear that? It's way too early for this. You drag me out of my bed at 6 a.m. To, to, I don't know. What are we doing today? We're doing the Daily Show. For, we're doing your episode oh, for that's Friday. My episode. So what? Is this the first Friday for me? I think so. I this think is the first so. Friday yeah. of May 2021. And let's start. Let's Do not you change your time. wallpaper? Yeah, I change it every month. Okay, Yeah. cool. So May 7th. Let's see what happened on this day. Today's observance, the first observance is National Tourism Day. Yay. What is it to be a tourist? Uh, it's like the joy of uh, welcoming new experience in a new place, uh, right? No, a tourist is a person who travels, not for stay, but for vacation. No, I know what I'm saying. It's like uh, you spend about a week uh, or a, a week. month, if ever. So let's say this, when you go traveling to a different place, right? What would be your like ideal amount of time to stay in? I'll say a month. A month? Yeah, because it's not enough for you to learn a month a is a things. lot, to be honest. No, I, well, again, to each on our own, right? Yeah, for me, I think like one and a half week okay. is good enough because like the half of the week, right, is you account for the travel and readjusting and the full week you get to spend the sightseeing. And yeah. the thing is, I don't think you can really capture the entire place that you're traveling in a month. No, yeah, well, that's true. But at the same time, you would have more understanding, especially on uh, places with rich culture in it. So here, here's the little thing, though. This, uh, this is where I disagree with you is because you stay for too long, like a month, right? You get burned out real quick. True, if especially like, if money is a problem or a, a concern. Yes, a month is way too much and money, too. And I feel like a week and a half, right? Uh, okay, so I was thinking, uh, it dep depends on the style of your traveling. If right. you want to travel one place in a long time, and then you save up again, and then travel to another place, then yeah. Right, right, right. But if you're if you plan on going weekly, I would assume that you might want to travel to different places continuously. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I guess that works. I'm well, but I, for me, I would prefer. I mean, because like. I feel like if I, let's say I travel to a specific place, Japan, mm -hmm. for a week, I don't think I could feel everything I wanted to do there. But the thing is, you can still go <laughs> back. Well, yeah, but I mean, and since that's, you're there. That's, that's, if you spend a short time in that place that you really like, right? You're more eager to go again the next time. And that's you actually true. know where you want to go this time. That's if, true. However, you spend a month, right? You spend a month, sometimes the last two, three weeks, right? You don't know what you want to do left and you're just sitting oh, no, in no, your no, hotel. You just get burned out. No, no, no. Well, that's not true because if your style is, uh, of traveling is that right, much, right, then you right. have to plan it for a month. You can't just like plan it for a week. That's true. You know, but of course, it's going to be harder. It will take longer because you, you're planning everything for a month. That's more days than a week and a half or two weeks. <laughs> right, right. So you kind of double it, you know? It's like you try to go to different places as much as you can for a month. All right. So. It's like, like you said, to each his own, right? That's true. So, yeah. For you, right? What is your uh, top of the list place to travel right now? I just said it. Japan. I wanted to experience uh, authenticity of their food, uh, you know, their technology. Well, uh, technology is the same as ours. What's on about? What 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 technology that they have is different than us? Oh, there's a lot of technology that came from Japan. Yeah, but know, I, I mean, like, what's like so different that you need? Oh, to go? Uh, uh, robotic waiters. We have that in America already. We don't. Yeah, we do. Where where is that? It's called those uh, little kiosks at the McDonald's. You press your yeah, burgers. but they they don't have the interaction you that Japan has. Like they're, they're asking actually... for interaction from a robot. Yeah, he's asking for interaction from a robot. You get interaction you guys, from humans. Did you guys, well, did you guys see the video? I'm uh, sorry, I'm a little cranky because it's so early and I didn't have a coffee. <laughs> sorry, Jerry. No, no, no. But it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, know? it's true. Uh, I think it, oh, uh, cherry blossom. I know we have it oh. here, but I think it's still different if you experience it over there. But I, again, it's just me. No, no, no. They're not called cherry blossoms. They're called sakura. Okay. Yes. So, anyways, <laughs> I think, so the best time for you, you want to travel during like the springtime. Fall. Fall. No, you want the cherry blossoms to bloom, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Spring. Springtime. Yeah. There you for go. me, Japan is on top of my list too, right? And but I want to go number one. It is actually. It oh, is. okay. Well, and cool. I want to go during the winter time because I really want to go to the natural hot springs when it's snowing. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, see those monkeys. That's... You ever seen those monkeys in the? Do they really do that? I guess, <laughs> right? Because in the anime or in any uh, other shows, movies yeah, or yeah. shows, you see like those monkeys. Okay, so uh, we're gonna learn, learn a list two more for the top three, right? 
So what's your second one? Oh, okay. I really haven't thought about that. I just got my mind set to Japan when I went. Well, if I happen to go to traveling, I would say uh, some parts of Europe, but not specifically uh, Germany. No, Germany is, is cool. Well, you go during like Oktoberfest. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I'll probably go uh, France. Eiffel Tower, the Louvre. You know what though? The, okay, so I think the countryside and you know Paris. Okay, but I think my second thing will be to actually travel around the U.S. Like visit the the states. So what state would be your top of the state that you want to visit? Uh, well, I'm just top of the state. Well, Hawaii would be one because it's the furthest. So if I'm done with that, then I just have I can just do my road trip from here, West Coast to East Coast. You know. You know, um, and Hawaii then, is an island. You can't do a road trip to Hawaii. No, that's why I wanted to go there <laughs> first. Oh, okay, how about Alaska? Uh, I'm probably gonna put Alaska last. Oh, because, well, you know. sorry, Mr. Mr. Alaskans. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, sorry, Alaskans. <laughs> not that I hate the place. It's just you know I'm not too good at cold places. Okay, so your first is Japan. Second one is uh, continental U.S. Yes. Uh, and then locally one. travel. Oh, well, no. So, I mean, U.S. covers the whole yeah, state. Yeah. Third one. Third one. Uh huh. I don't know, maybe Vietnam. Okay, why? It's just because it's close to our country, I haven't been there, you know. Actually, there's a lot of uh, other neighboring countries that we have in the Philippines that I haven't been. So. Hmm, what would I Like Malaysia, do? Singapore, Brunei, those are like really close to our country. Probably third would probably be like Dubai. Middle East. Yeah. Okay. Because like people rarely. Each... No, well. People do travel there, right? But yeah. when people say they want to travel, they always travel like the big spots. And Dubai is one of the bigger spots in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like... Oh, oh you're going to go to the... Uh, what do you call that tallest building? I Burj Khalifa so. or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So there's uh, being a tourist, right? Also, the one thing that etiquette is a tourist, right? Is be mindful of your environment and leave. Uh, leave as you come. So don't litter trash the place. Oh, yeah, you know? of course. Some basic etiquettes for traveling and safe travels of course safe travel safe travel i mean even though we are starting to operate uh better compared to the first uh year that we had yeah, a shutdown yeah. you know uh, you still have to be safe so but the thing is for both of us right we list our top three destination that we want to visit as tourists right we didn't list space as an option oh yeah today is international space day it's well, I don't know. It's kind of boring space out there. <laughs> it's not. Well, it is boring. It's like, like there's no shopping malls on the moon. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the stars that you can see, they're probably gonna look better outside uh, the planet. But right. it's it's pretty much the same thing. So if uh, space <laughs> travel is in our close future, right? Or what is it called? Not distant future, but um, what's the opposite of distant future? Uh, near future. Near future. There oh, you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> In a new future, in oh my gosh, it's so early. In the near future, right? If we have the technology and the safety guidelines to travel to space, would you go there? I would, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, but, as long as it's a trip, it's a two-way trip. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, it has to be a two-way trip. We're not sending you to Mars to populate it. <laughs> you don't have the genes for it. Remember? Just kidding. <laughs> remember the movie? What do you call that? Uh, Mars. Was it Mars with uh, uh, Matt Damon? Ma Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you know how to grow potatoes here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, for now, you know how we know major. We know like. Uh, a good amount of information about our solar system, the Milky Way, right? And at the moment, there's no life forms and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Civilization. I mean, there's no credible, there's no no credible, credible uh, evidence. No, no, yeah, not yet. Mm -hmm. So I guess the best thing we can do for space travel is just like remaining in orbit of the Earth and just viewing the Earth from afar, the moons, and you know, space itself. And I think that's a worthwhile trip, to be honest, to take. Right. Actually, right. what I find amazing uh, about us humans is we're able to know much, a lot about, you know, our neighboring galaxy and stars. You know, but you know how or by by what method? By just observing from where we are. Yes, we. It's just like, it's just isn't light. it amazing? It is amazing, but it'd be <clears throat> much more amazing if we could see in person. Oh well, of rather course. Rather than that, so of course. That's the one thing I want to see in my lifetime is either we are able to travel to in space safely and return safely. And to discover another civilization out there. I think the only way for us to do that is if we learn to perfect space and time warps. 
to save time because like you know no, like if, if we're going to a very uh i wouldn't want to say primitive right, but right, the, right. the 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 way we know how to travel right now uh -huh. it will take us forever right right so for me i feel like for us to proceed into this next step in humanity is for us to get along and put aside our differences if we cooperate oh that's true we we will we advance our technology much faster because like in the 1960 right uh, well, I mean, it was a race. A I know, race, but a little yeah. bit of competition here and there. Yeah, yeah. a good healthy competition. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, because it kind of pushes everyone to be, you know, to uh, to do their best. I feel like it's kind of ridiculous how now this day and age we still have differences with, you know, humans with each other. And I feel like, well, the thing is, I don't think it's going to go away. I know, but if no. it did go away, we can be advanced so much quicker. And it's just a shame. It's a really shame that people are close-minded. Well, on the other part right. is that whenever uh, a country needs help, you know, uh, a lot of countries are willing to help out. Oh yeah, so absolutely, absolutely. When it comes to natural, you know, battling against natural disaster, right. uh, uh, what do you call this? Like uh, global situation, mm -hmm. you know, we end up helping each other anyway. So. But I feel like there's there's, there's like, more there's room for more. No, no, no. Uh, I, uh, I mean, there's, there's more like we call it. There's some hidden prodigies out there in the world. That we just need to, you know, help these countries get them to a standard pace of living, and these individuals that are gifted mm -hmm. can have a proper education and help us advance in technology and stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be for the humankind's benefit, right. you know. So what's better than traveling to space, a national tourism day, international space day? Traveling and we have still? What? A good dinner, and what better dinner to oh, have wow. than? Roast lamb, roast leg of lamb to you, exact. When was the last time you tried me? a roast leg of lamb? I didn't try a roast leg of lamb, but I had lamb recently. That's cool. Mediterranean food, it was pretty, pretty good. Um, what else more to say? Look how delicious is it? Mm -hmm. It's just a leg of lamb. Well, it's definitely not as common here. No, no, no. It's it's <laughs> more like uh, what you call it, like something you find in a restaurant. You can't like go to like a your local yeah market mm -hmm. and grab and do it at home. You find more like the specialty uh, butcher shop. Some more. I won't say for lamb. You probably get it more from the Middle Eastern supermarkets. Okay. Yeah. Cause for like, for those who haven't tried them, uh, would you be able to describe the flavor? Uh, I all at least the taste. Does it? Taste it's like really chicken? tender. Does it taste like? beef or does it taste something different i don't know my taste is really bad oh okay but, uh, <laughs> i know my taste is really bad i'm gonna say because i i did try it i'm gonna say that it has this distinct uh, uh not really flavor because when you say a flavor you're also counting putting into account the seasoning and mm. the stuff right uh i guess taste Taste, uh, texture. The, the texture is much more tender than like you uh, can tell beef. it's not chicken and no, it's not absolutely beef. you can tell different i think it's more Lighter and sweeter inside. Mm -hmm. Something like that, kind of like porkish, pork chicken. I don't know. When I when I ate my lamb, it wasn't roast lamb though. Oh, how was just, how was it cooked? Uh, I think it was grilled, and it kind of okay. like it kind of looked like the same texture as a steak. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But it was pretty good. I like it. It wasn't heavy as when I'm eating steak or beef, right? Mm -hmm. It's much lighter, and when I bite into it, it was much more tender. Oh, but now it's uh, grilled. This is roast roasting. I like roasting because I like roasting too. I like it, roasted chicken, you know. It give you that little crispy yes, uh, the, the surface. One, yeah, and then when you take a bite, it's soft inside. Right, I mean, right. <laughs> it's like the perfect uh, combination of texture, soft, and, and then you have some kind of a sauce, maybe, maybe a specialty sauce for yeah. that place. You know, yeah, remember like what you call it when you roast uh, turkey, right? Yeah, that cranberry sauce and gravy and all mm. that stuff. Mm. Oh. So good. All right, it's too early. Joe hasn't gotten his coffee, and now he's talking about food. <laughs> That's not good. That's a bad recipe. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can try some roast leg of lamb, mm -hmm. right? But like I said, I wouldn't know. The person who would probably know is Ian, right? Yes. Yeah, he, he, he wanted to find a place to sell a good roast of lamb. You should ask him. All right, moving on to today in history, we have in 1946, Ooh. Tokyo Telecommunication Engineering. Later renamed as Sony is founded. So when you go to Japan, you probably want to visit uh, Sony headquarters, right? Yes. Get your PlayStation, your Blu-ray. Well, I wanted to see like your the Walkman. original you know Walkman. company. Oh yeah, Sony, Nintendo, Sega. But mm -hmm. I believe the Sega office is closed already because I, of the pandemic. Probably, yeah. But yeah, Sony's yeah, one of those uh, really... It's a mainstay. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. 
And they started as uh, appliances and speakers right, right. and equipments, you know. And now uh, they also have the gaming console called the PlayStation. Yes. So Sony for me, right? I remember back in the early days before they started making the video games was the Walkman. The Walkman was... That was a video game? No, before video games. Oh, before video games. The right. one thing that uh, Sony, the company itself, that took over uh, the culture was the Walkman. Yeah, they're very heavy on audio. The, audio I mean, there's yeah. a lot of speakers and, and subwoofers, yes. you know? Sony. Sub, sub what? Subwoofers. Did they make dogs now? Robot dogs? No, that's the term for uh, an audio equipment. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, what else do they make? They make cameras. Oh, well, they do make phones now. You they know? make phones too, but the uh -huh. phones are not really as uh, popular. Uh huh. Uh, I think Sony, they make the Ericsson, the Xperia. Well, what ha stuff. well yeah, because I think Ericsson, uh, they had to buy Ericsson because they were kind of on the decline. That's why, when, uh, you know, the phones back in the day, they had Sony Ericsson. Mm, you yes. know, so. But. What are Sony stuff that you know? I know they make. Uh, I mean, they're pretty much everywhere when you talk about electronics. TV, they make TV. They got TV now. I've never seen a refrigerator though. Not yet. <laughs> because Samsung, Samsung makes a refrigerator and you know other appliances too. Mm -hmm. What other Sony stuff they make? Um, audio headphones. They have really high quality headphones, high fidelity headphones. If you use video games, if you used to have a Walkman, then Walkman. you definitely uh, saw Sony uh, before experience DVD Sony. player, a VHS yeah, yeah, there you player. Go. What other electronics do they make? They make toys. I'm pretty sure they make some toys, some gadgets, right? I mean, what's a gaming console? They no, but it's not well, not video games. Like actual like robot toys, dogs. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, no, no. We actually we saw one of those uh, uh, video. Uh, it's called the Sony Ibo. Oh which yeah, is yeah, yeah, robot dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they do make that then. Yes, they did. <laughs> uh, what other things Sony makes? I don't know. Well, I kind of blank out now. Well, there's a lot. Definitely. Cameras. So we definitely make camera video recorders. Right? Mm -hmm. And speaking of camera, we're gonna lead on to notable birth is in 1909. Edwin H. Land was oh. born in uh, Bridgeport, oh, Connecticut. Um, he is best known as a co-founder of the Polaroid. Corporation. What is Polaroid? Oh, the camera. Camera, exactly. That's cool. So what he uh, helped uh, invented was an inexpensive way to polarize light. Okay. So polarizing light means, so in the world we see light all the time, right? But it is unrefined. It's a mess. So polarizing these light, right? You're basically filtering it and collecting the light that you want mm. for a clear picture. So filtering refined. the ones that you don't like. Yes, exactly. And then getting the ones that you like right. to have a better image. So, you remember back then before we have our phone where you can take a picture and get it digitally, right? We have film strips and stuff like that. Yes. Right? And JR, when we take a phone, right? How fast does the photo develop? Instant, right? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. like when you take a picture with your phone, boom, instant. However, back then, what do you have to do? We have a standard uh, camera with a camera roll. You have to go to this red room in the uh, dark room. You know. Oh, is it dark room? Oh, it's a red room. Yeah, yeah it's called dark room. But it's, it's not. Red. It's, it's dark room because yeah. it's dark. But they need the red light right, because right. if any other light applies, it it, it uh it basically messes up the film. Exactly. You know? It causes like it uh, exposes it. Expose it to lights that you don't want to mm -hmm. uh, have. But what I'm trying to say is, it took a while. It did. I mean, like if you look at the history of camera, it all started with uh, this single person you have to cover you know yeah, that so person had to cover themselves the flash bulb like, they had to break the flash yeah bulb. oh my gosh <laughs> so over time we we develop more and more for the camera right mm -hmm. into what we have now is our phone but our phone itself is so amazing when you think about it right it was just for calling and suddenly it became a camera i mean if you were living, mine has five cameras right but if you're living like let's say back in the 1900s right right, right. and then if you hear the if you hear the statement oh didn't you use your phone to take pictures? People say, what are you talking about? Right! <laughs> now it's know. very common. Like, all right, bring out your phone so you can take a picture. It's like, my rotary what? phone? What does that phone? mean? <laughs> where's, where's the option on a rotary phone to take a turn to a camera? That's pretty <laughs> awesome. So, um, we, when uh, it was, we got the cameras, right? You have those camera rolls. You give it to a person to develop it, right? And it mm -hmm. takes a while to develop it, right? Unlike today, we have digital camera, which is instantaneous. Like and you don't have to worry about the file size right. or like the storage size right. because they're all digital. So what uh, Edwin Land did was he developed an inexpensive way to make an instant camera. Yes. So basically, 
when you think the, of this, the, the point and shoot yes, style exactly. before. Yes, yes. So when you think of a camera, right, the camera strip, right, what's that called? What's a film call that it needs to be developed? It starts with a letter N. Uh, negative? Yeah, exactly. So you have a negative and a positive on these, uh, this uh, film strip. Mm -hmm. So basically, his instant camera basically captures the light, it hits the negative, and the negative reacts exposed to the light, and they bring it to the positive side. So that's how you get the picture. Oh, okay. So you ever seen those uh, Polaroid uh, cameras or those Kodak moments? Well, we, we still have one. My wife and I still have one because, uh, you know, sometimes we would want to get like a uh, a quick capture of, right. of the moment and then this Polaroid camera even though it's kind of advanced because it prints out right exactly. away yeah so you take a picture of it you uh, pull it out and you shake uh, it yeah, and you kind of like right. shake it yeah, yeah so some people like that because it's good for memories because mm -hmm. you take a picture you can write whatever you want the date and time like that you yeah. can't really mm -hmm. do a digital uh, digital uh, picture yeah the only thing though is uh, it's a little bit of an expensive side because it's nowadays yeah it's more like uh it's a fun thing now it's a fun thing yeah it's before a... you had disposable cameras that were like two dollars you just snap 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 take I, for, it, I, I forgot the term novelty novelty yeah there you it's go. a novelty now it's not as efficient as a digital camera yeah right because like digital camera you can take as limited as you want Store it, uh, yeah, high quality, exactly, right. But this uh, the nostalgic factor of the the Polaroid camera with the little uh, what do you call it, the little uh, printout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like it. So you know, back then, back then, like Mr. I said, the, 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 the camera roll took like a while, and it's a camera was like under. So he's kind of like you. You can say that he's kind of like Henry Ford of the cameras because he found a way to make the cost of, you know. Yeah, cameras. it's comparable. It's comparable, but I think Henry Ford has more of a, more of a, cultural impact because okay. the car is more. Oh yeah, of course. Versatile, of course. not versatile. It's more usable than a camera. Not but, usable. Uh, what's the word? More, affordable. Not affordable. It's more accessible. Not accessible. It's more widespread. There we go. Oh, car, okay. cars are more widespread than cameras. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of so course. I meant uh -huh. so Ford is a little bit higher on the scale of Edwin Land, but they're both. Great in their respective field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving on to cultural spotlight. So me and you talked about this, and I'm pretty sure we we didn't pick it. The person who picked it, right? Yeah. Picked it because coincide with Cinco de Mayo. So everyone should know Cinco de Mayo, right? It's a celebration of Mexican heritage, Mexican Americans uh, heritage, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it spawned from the battle of uh, what do you call it when the Mexican army defeated the French army in I forgot the, like I don't know the battle of Puebla. It. Yeah, Puebla. Yes. Yeah. So they celebrate, but for them, Cinco de Mayo is not really the the biggest uh, holiday. No, no, it, no, it, no. It's just got a way. It's same thing with St. Patrick's Day. American America took it and ran with it, kind well, of. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, yeah. Basically, Mexican American are uh, trying to kind of incorporated day right. for them to have a, uh, a link to their heritage right. here in the US. Yeah, so for <clears throat> people in Mexico, right? They, they're more, the more, we call it, it's more of their revolution day that's more important than Cinco de Mayo. Mm -hmm. And another day that uh, the Mexicans celebrate is the Day of the Dead. Very yeah. Very important. They dress up, they remember the, the people who uh, passed on and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? And Mexico is like rich, and cultural heritage so they are the beginning of like with a mesoamerica right when you hear the word meso it means middle because mm -hmm. mexico is in central america you have south america which is brazil all that place you have north america which is canada and us united states and they're, they're right dab in the middle mesoamerica like mesopotamia mm -hmm. in the middle so they have ancient civilization we see over here right they all have temples shrines stuff like that they, back they got there. pyramids too they have pyramids too you have the we call it, the two uh, two well known ancient civilization in Mexico is the Mayans and the Aztecs, right? Yeah, some of the culture is still seen to this day, like you see, you see here, right? Um, then you have more of the heritage that we know is because we live in Southern, Southern California, right? Mm -hmm. It's basically like an extension of Mexico. I mean, the whole region in our area it was part of Mexico in in the early days. It used of to be yes. yes. Uh -huh. So for me and you, right, we live in Southern California. We are inundated, inundated and like exposed to a lot of Mexican heritage culture, right? Mm -hmm. The food is delicious, right? Tacos, burritos, horchata. <laughs> I can list so much more, but Jared told me not to list food so early in the morning. But 
besides that, right, the culture itself is... Even though we've seen it a lot, right? It's still more to explore. Yes. Yeah. And... I what can I say? What I can I say? I love their food. <laughs> oh, yes. And the music, uh -huh. too. The music, you can hear, like, almost... I mean, every Saturday morning, I hear it when they, you know... <laughs> actually, yeah, well, actually, for me, and actually, yes. I, I'm sure Ian too. Uh, the the uh, one another way for you to learn uh, someone's culture or mm. uh, country's culture is through their food too. Absolutely, because uh, their food is heavily connected to what they do right. in life. Like, let's say, why are a lot of Asian countries uh, have rice as staple? You know, of course, and one would be. Let me tell you something too. Because of the way you call it, the the, the rice is a staple, right? Mm -hmm. What Mexico given us as a world, right, is chili peppers. Chili peppers, right? Chili peppers. So Mexico, right? Like I was gonna repeat what I was said earlier was chili peppers, right? It's seen everywhere around Red the world. Hot. I, I always thought like chili pepper was uh, native to Asia, right? Because my country we use a lot of chili peppers, right? Mm -hmm. But I learned that actually chili peppers right was native to mexico and uh, portuguese explorer traders came and took it and spread it around the world mm -hmm. and that's how we got chili peppers around the world and if you are very very keen of what i just said it'll, it'll help you find out what the theme of the stuff is for this week so i see close oh okay never mind so first we do is out of the day and out of the day is the tree shrew tree shrew so i then, choose you <laughs> so it's like sand shrew right uh, yeah but yeah. it's a tree yeah on top of the tree so the <laughs> weird thing is about this is even though it's called a tree shrew right it's not a shrew a shrew is like a mole it burrows down right well, it does look like one it I'll does it, it does yeah. but uh -huh. not like you know genetically you know okay and not all tree shoe live in the tree. Oh, so weird. So these guys are known to be. But found. they do live by. Uh, I mean, for like, they do live by the trees. Yeah, yeah, they live by the trees. M majority of them. Ma majority of them. Yeah, okay. So they live in the tropical forest of Southeast Asia, right? Okay. That's like you know. Uh, I mean, Philippines, Philippines is one. <laughs> Vietnam, <laughs> yeah. Cambodia, Laos, the tropical jungles, right? And uh, what's unique about these guys is they're one of the only animals, mammals actually, that likes to eat pepper. Okay. Because pepper... So we have a competition now. Yeah, it's because pepper, right? It has this chemical inside that causes pain, right? You know, mm -hmm. eating hot stuff causes pain, right? Most mammals avoid it, except for these guys, so it's really weird. So they have a gene in their body that lets them tolerate the heat and they can eat it. Okay. So birds don't have this the, the pain gene that we have, right, as humans and other mammals, right? So birds can eat peppers like no problem. But mammals like us and tree shrew, right? Well, not the tree shrew, because they can't eat the peppers without any pain. Just mild pain or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So like humans, dogs, other mammals, uh, bears, they probably eat the peppers and they avoid it because it's too much pain. Yeah. So these guys are really cool in a way where they can seek out spicy food and eat them normally because like plants itself right they which is good because they don't have a lot of competition except exactly, for us humans. exactly right you know so they would never go hungry because there's no other mammals that would eat the pepper like they hey, would eat it. why do you guys eat this this is pretty good <laughs> <laughs> right so these guys pretty cool one of the only mammals that actually pretty eat. cool for eating something pretty hot yeah. there we go so this is one mammal that eats a uh, hot pepper right do you know what the other uh, mammal that eat hot pepper is well, you did say bird. Oh, wait, did you say mammal? Yeah. No, I'm not sure. Us. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> we course. are mammals who eat hot peppers. I mean, we, we actually seek out hot peppers. We seek out? Well, yes. maybe you guys, <laughs> not me. Oh, yeah, you don't like spicy food, huh? I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. No. But you know, there's. I can tolerate at least uh, that much. You know, those there's those uh, people who like seek out the hottest pepper, like those ghost peppers. Oh, so my like, gosh. Eat it. Yes. Uh huh. Oh, man. So let me tell you something about uh, the pepper soup, right? You know, you shouldn't be drinking water because water actually spread the chemical that makes you hurt. Uh, yes. So you, you drink milk. You have to drink something with dairy. Yeah. Something that's uh, not water, basically. So the tree shrew. So plan of the day, we are going to talk about the chili pepper. I knew it. I well, knew you it. did mention it. Yeah. So. so it is native to Mexico, like I said. And after the, you know, the Portuguese trader came and spread around the world, right? 
we have it all around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, some people use this uh, for food, where that's the most obvious, uh, not obvious, the more uh, common, common usage. Common use okay. of it. Uh -huh. Some people use medicine. Really? Yeah. So you can use the medicine. Some people use uh, weight loss too. It, okay. it suppresses your appetite because like you're eating so much hot and you don't want to eat anymore. And then you're probably just going to drink water by default even though you're not supposed right, to. So. Right. Well, yeah, you shouldn't be drinking water. You should be drinking dairy because, you know, it's oily. You want to wash away water and oil doesn't mix. So that's why they don't. Yeah, well. they don't. Yeah. And it's used as medicine as a, a appetite suppressant because you're not going to eat more. And it also has this uh, antimicrobial. So it, it really harms bacteria. So which is good. So people usually said, Eat too much chili pepper, right? It'll burn a hole in your stomach and cause this ulcer, right? Ooh, yeah. Well, it's really not true. What pepper actually help is prevent ulcer because the bacteria that causes uh, ulcer in your stomach, right, will probably be uh, get kicked out because of the chili pepper, the chemical in the chili pepper. Right. But right. of course, it all comes down to the moderation too, because eating too much of it is not good oh, either. Oh, absolutely. You're. So, um, you can literally feel it in your throat going to your stomach when you, you know. Like and the, the end part of your digestion too. Yes. You, there you feel go. it all throughout your body <laughs> so not a pleasant uh, feeling so, so you're not you're not a fan of chili peppers no jalapenos uh not really no, uh no. It, it, my, the the way i eat them is more like conditional like let's say i'm uh, i'm having a fever or I'm, i have a cold you know and then i got a clogged nose oh so, so it opens up your uh, I, I put it in a soup let's say a noodle soup okay okay and then i don't really eat them but i make uh, that makes the soup spicy and when i uh you know take a sip of the soup it just opens the the pores uh, or probably opens my, my, my you know the the clogness in my nose so, so this chili pepper it feels you, good <laughs> yeah this chili pepper you've probably seen before right but oh, the, yeah, yeah, the one that we used to is the more skinny one the the one that used for like sriracha and stuff like that yes yeah uh -huh. or like uh, it's sliced up you put in your fish sauce and whatever right mm -hmm. or soy um, sauce or whatever sauce you have what are chili peppers are there's you know i've said it before the carolina reaper the ghost pepper the ghost pepper i actually those I are heard, crazy hot yeah actually i heard before uh, someone tries a ghost pepper in a the restaurant they have to sign a waiver oh yeah absolutely it's just because that's that's how would you say dangerous it's it it can it cause is. issues with breathing because it does oh yeah affect uh -huh. your throat and so they had to sign a waiver imagine that <laughs> so it is it's not it's not something that you like you said, like other mammals wouldn't want to seek it out. Why would you want to seek out pain? This seems ridiculous. So, <laughs> I don't know. The nature is weird. Humans and tree shrew are really weird. <laughs> they love pain. Moving on to art of the day, we have Street Scene and Montmartre in 1887. Another Vincent Van Gogh. Okay. Right. I'm trying, so trying you to probably check think, the connection. What is the connection? So what do you see here? You see uh, two see individual couple. Yeah. You see a little kids, and you see that huge windmill, right? Yeah. That's the pepper mill windmill. Oh. Right. Okay. So this was part of a private uh, part of a private collection. It just recently got sold in um, I think March of 2021 this year. Mm -hmm. For I I think the amount was around 13 or 15 million. What? So this was this this, is, this was awesome. what was unique about this was it was in a, a family's collection for a long time, so it finally reappeared and was sold in Sotheby's in uh, Paris, Paris, Paris. I keep saying Paris. Um, so this painting, right? Like I said, the features two couples, some kids, a fence in a in a village, or a, a village, right? And you have the pepper mill, uh -huh. windmill. And moving on to the science fact of the day, we have capsaicin. 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 So you have 18 carbons, 27 hydrogens, uh, one nitrogen. You see the one nitrogen is what the color? Blue one? Right. Uh, three oxygen, which is the red one, right? So when I was talking about the tree shrew, how they ate peppers, and the chemical that causes pain, and also the chili pepper, the main component of it is the chemical, right? And that's the chemical, capsaicin. Mm, that's the spicy. That's the spicy part. part. Yeah. Okay. So pure capsaicin is super dangerous because it's it's like uh, what do you call it? It causes so much pain, really. It does. It yeah. is. It is the core chemical in pepper spray. So the capsaicin it goes in your eyes and your mouth, and it goes through these receptors, right? These openings in your your what do you call it? Your nerves, your mm -hmm. body, right? And it causes You're, extreme pain. Oh. And that's when you tear up to get rid so of that, it. So that is what they use for tear gas, paper, uh, pepper, pepper spray, spray tear gas, spray. Spray, bear spray. This is also the ingredient in the spiciness that you eat in your food. Ooh. Capsaicin. 
And like I talked about earlier, right? People use this. Sometimes they use this for uh, medicinal use. Mm -hmm. You know, antibacteria helps you with your pain, actually. So you ever have those, what do you call those uh, rubs? Those muscle rubs, right? You see the, the hotness? Mm -hmm. It's capsaicin. Mm, yeah. Okay. So, like, Icy Hot. They have Benge. Yeah. Uh, what other brand? Uh, of you know, the, those patches? Pain relief. No, well, those. Those oh, they're, they're not using capsaicin. No, they use uh, lidocaine. <laughs> okay. Lidocaine is uh, what we call it. It's a uh, is used it, before it was used for a dental procedure. They they uh, they inject you with a little, uh, lidocaine so mm -hmm. they can operate in your mouth, right? So nowadays you use it in your uh, muscle rubs, okay. muscle rub pain relief. So, but capsaicin is used for pain relief too, and it was actually banned using in horse racing. Because it was such an effective way to uh, for pain relief for horses, mm -hmm. so okay. it's actually a banned substance for horse racing. It's interesting, really. That's cool. So, you probably understand what was the theme of this week, right? Something about spicy. Mm. I would think so. Yeah. So, the word day is pungent. Oh, okay. So pungent is an adjective meaning having sharply strong taste or smell. Oh. Right. So. In this case, the spiciness of the pepper. Exactly. When you have pepper, right? You need to taste it to know it's hot already. You mm. can just smell it, you know. Oh, okay, that's pepper. I, JR probably wouldn't want to eat it. I probably would eat it too, but I need a glass of milk. And, you know, punch is just not to describe just hotness, right? You can describe it as something that's stinky, mm -hmm. something that's super bitter, something that, that's well, super sour. I would, say, I would say strong would be the, def the exact term. Yes, strong, right. Because so, like it just kind of like, Punches you, <laughs> punches your nose or your eyes, or, or that's, your, your tongue. That's you know? really good though. That's a good description. It's like like oh, if it tastes oh, a punch, that? right? <laughs> that must have been pungent. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, that's a good way. Yeah, that's, thank you, Jared. That's a good way. So that is um, our show for today. For Friday, the 7th, 2021. Are you right? going to get your coffee now? I'm going to get my coffee. Some people put some uh, okay, little pepper, pepper in the coffee. I don't know why it wakes them up. They I, do? I know. That's weird. That's so weird. I know. They, people have been inventing new ways of drinking coffee nowadays. I don't know. I just drink my coffee straight up black, you know? Keep it simple. Well, talking about strong coffee or strong flavor right there. Black coffee is like strong flavor. Uh, it's yeah. just the coffee itself. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, National Tourism Day. Uh, we call it International Space Day. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy space, traveling to space. You can just use a telescope, look at the skies, enjoy the day. And have yourself a nice roast lamb. Really. Yeah, there you go. I mean, like, as always, you guys uh, try to leave your comments or your mm. thoughts in the comment section below, especially the the first observance. Right. Uh, tourism tourism day. Tourism. Try to... Find a place that you want to travel. Tell us. Top tell three, tell, top three, top tell three. us your favorite place or countries or city that you guys uh, want to visit. So, have a good rest of your day and rest of your weekend. And we'll see you back on Monday. We are done with the first week of May. So fast. I know, so fast. All right. See you guys. See you Thank guys. you.